TJ, kick us off. Here we go. This is a bottle we're going to try. Usually I make these guys do it blind, but I'm going to make, I'm going to tell them ahead of time what it is because I was super excited to find this and shout out to our guys at Saveway, uh, which a couple years ago are one eighth uh, distilling. Uh, oh, yeah. Calvados finished pick that best was our whiskey best of the whiskey of the year. And they put a little sign up at their store and said, Power Bourbon did this. Stopped in when I was visiting my friend Cody up in Chicago. Saw this. People have been talking about it nonstop. They did a pick, and I was like, okay, I just got to buy it. They also let me try it at the store, and it was freaking delicious, which is, and I apologize, I'm going to just butcher the crap out of this name, and you're just going to have to deal with it. Uh, it is Bahaka, Bahaka Ta. I don't know. It comes in a really <laughs> awesome bottle. I think it's, it's just Bahaka. Sure. Are you are you making up words? I am. I I am dyslexic. I am terrible at English. It is B H A K T A. I've never seen those letters in that order. Or he is just that. So we'll call it. I'm I'm, I'm 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 pretty sure you just went hot dewy, and yeah. that's exactly what just hey, happened. I'm not that famous. Watch out. All right. So uh, it is a straight rye whiskey finished in Calvados and Armagnac barrels, uh, mm. inspired by 1928 and the Roaring Twenties private selection. But why this matters? This is from the founder of Whistle Pig. Uh, so it's probably Canadian rye. They didn't really like say a bunch of that. But apparently when you go and do a single barrel, you get to choose like the amount of each thing in it and the vintages and everything like that. So this has a 1983 vintage, a 1991 vintage, and a 1996 vintage. It is 60% straight rye whiskey and 30% XO Calvados with 10% French Armagnac. Lots of information. So, people have been going crazy for these things. Had to pick it up. As you can see, I have drank through this pretty well. It is delicious. So yes. Whiskey finished in those barrels? or Yes. Rye. It is rye finished in okay. Calvados barrels and French barrels. Gotcha. Yes. I was like, they didn't mix. No. It's like... One Calvados from the other to the other. Yeah. Yes, it says French <clears throat> barrel finish, ten percent Armagnac. Gotcha. So, yes. And then did, it, did they like ten percent Armagnac? The and then did 10%, they hang, uh, hang it up with the laundry on like a clothesline as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of descriptions going on here. Yeah, there, I mean, there's um, a ton of stuff going on. So it is uh, like ten percent was fin of the rye whiskey was finished in Armagnac barrels. And of and that's where it gets crazy. Of that ten percent in Armagnac barrels, it was an eighty three vintage, a ninety one vintage, and a ninety six vintage. And I don't know what percentage of each of those vintages okay. were in that ten percent. Yeah. Just craziness. Yeah, that and seems only ten percent. Like I get it on the nose strongly. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah, I it's... assume those those were non conflict barrels that those came from too, as well. Is that in the description? Con well, I I understand none of this. I was equating it to conflict diamonds. Um, I figured that. Just, I didn't know. I was trying to figure out. Armagnac was... Southwest France. Yes. Uh, not really. Ref now, there wasn't a lot of, They most of those distillers sold their barrels during World War II to help pay for, um, yeah, the, the wartime. But that's what you're <laughs> referencing. That was in the 30s. So you don't, you don't see a lot of 1938 to 45 uh, Armagnac. Yeah. But that's that. Uh, I'm, I'm so, happy you got yeah. on there, Chuck. All I would like to say is I apologize because I don't really feel like editing all this nonsense out. So let's try it and see what we think because the nose is amazing. Nose yeah. is delightful. Yeah. This is like, it's, man, you get you get a little bit of the ride, but boy, you get a lot. To me, a lot of the Armagnac, a lot of the Calvados. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the Calvados Absolutely. and the Armagnac. It's like it's a mean, little. Yeah. It's a spicy. When I say spicy, it's a cinnamon and it's a, it's a cinnamon fruit. Mm -hmm. 
it's like you almost get a little bit of the rye spice like coming through the very start of the note and then like the rest of it is like and we're taking over yeah <clears throat> yeah and then lacerated mm-hmm. fruit a from fermented fruit yeah just really nice notes yeah that i mean and then, i mean I, i'm gonna say i'm gonna jump in nice nose nice nose. understatement chuck you're like mr sniff a lot over here <laughs> and you're like so oh, no it, it, it's a, it's a nice nose like this is a phenomenal nose i mean this is where you should be going into a monologue sir about this nose i feel like i'm, I'm not a like nosy guy nose? I'm not a nosy guy. Yes, you are. And I'm like, wow, I'm enjoying this nose. You're not nosy, yeah. but you're nosy. Um, mm-hmm. No, I, I very much enjoy this nose. Yeah, very much. Yeah, and then on the, the palate and the finish, you get this wonderful melding of the rye, but not like spearminty rye. It's definitely more of a hay grassy rye, but very subdued. And the grape, and Calvados notes take the forefront and just make this amazing palette mm. and finish. Okay, I, I haven't tried this yet. I want a candle of this. I want all of my bourbon to have this oh. notes. Like, I, I just can't get past it. Like, I'm all, I almost don't want to drink this. I don't want to be disappointed in some way, shape, or form. Whew. You're still this on the nose. Beautiful nose. Yes, sir. I'm still on the nose. <laughs> I think. I think we needed to take this a pause. I don't think we've seen this phenomenal. in the history of the channel where no. Brian has paused at a nose. Yep. This I just is can't legendary. Wait for him to... This is legendary. The, yep. I, yeah. I mean, when we take a pause on when I'm the last one to try it, like, um, I mean, just like, no, Brian. Gonna... What you get on the nose is what you get on the palate and finish. It's not hiding. No. Yeah. I'm drinking now. Yeah, I, to, to me, it's delightful on the palate and finish. This is like candied, um, sweet, candied yeah. candied fruit oh. with like just a touch of that rye spice. Um, I think it's it's a very very well put together blend of finished product. Yep, you have fan. just ruined my year. Of oh no, I have not ruined your year yet. I'm getting ready to. This is. I, I, this store, like whatever they pick, buy. Like, yeah, oh my yeah. goodness. So we all like it. So my question <laughs> to you is how much would you be willing to pay for it? Like, what do you think should be MSRP of this? It's the negotiation or are we... Well, yeah. and remember, I'm, I'm just going to caveat. Remember, this is somebody from Whistlepig. And we know Whistlepig mm. is like way up there for cost. Oh, so. I was thinking like, but for me, like my opinion of Whistlepig is way down here. Right, so. right, right, right. So, but I I'm just say, saying. I will pay you $50 for the rest of that bottle. Price here, opinion <laughs> here. $50 for half a <laughs> bottle. So you're saying a full bottle is worth 100 Like, what I, would you pay would for pay, a full bottle? I would definitely pay a Hyundai for okay, a hundred. I don't know how much. See nodding mm. from Chuck. I'm waiting to see if he's willing to go higher than 100. It's not Price is Right rules. There's mm. no winner. I mean, Ruby that's quite good. Bottle. So, I, like in my mind, the Untitleds, which we've very much enjoyed, <laughs> um, similar finished products, are in that 100 range, 100, 110. Um, definitely think it's of that quality. Maybe the the this could be the what's the proof point on this. It is 53.4, so that'd be a hundred. So a little bit lower 8. probably than the untitled, which may be where I think some of the untitled gives it that extra elevation as far as like they're using 10, 12, 12 year whiskey that's or had been used 10, 12 year whiskey. Um but from the Bardstown perspective, like geez, the, their finished products are Hundred and one sixty fifty but one sixty yeah. two this was yeah. like one yeah one forty five one forty five one fifty one fifty five one sixty yeah it's just like it just oof. Mm-hmm. um I would take this over any of the recent Barstown finish that I've had. So I'd be I'd be a very happy camper at one ten. Okay. Uh one nineteen ninety nine. Okay. So I paid, I paid fifty five dollars for this. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> but I mean, best value in whiskey, right there. Finished People. rye whiskey. We can't. We we can we caveat asterisk best. <laughs> Let's segment this down. I, I didn't to, uh... say bourbon. I did not say bourbon intentionally. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, let's back this up. Like, people are going, well, not going. Well, like, if you're a Angels Envy fan, mm. why wouldn't mm-hmm. you drink this? <laughs> All day instead. All, All day. day. All day. day instead. Not even oh a God. question. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's face it. We're not getting an Angels Envy, like, partnership anytime soon. On this channel, no. I mean, let's so, be honest, we're not getting any partnership on yeah. this channel. Other than, <laughs> like, hey, the, the three way, like, no, that's not yeah. true. We appreciate yeah. our Patreon, they're fantastic, yeah. but it, oh, they're the best. But yeah, no, if if you see uh, from a story you trust this bottle that's a pick, or you just see this bottle that says 1928 finished in Calvados and Armagnac, pick it up. Like, you can't, like, it's it's amazing. Is it still available in Chicago, and how soon can Chuck get there? Sometimes bottles, like, they they turn you off from a brand, and you say, like, I'm not going to buy anything from that. Mm-hmm. Some turn you on to a brand and say, like, whoa, maybe there's something here, and, like, yeah. you're going to go seek them out. I think this is a bottle that you're going to go seek out. And it's made, you, obviously, this is a single barrel. So it's like you can't find this exact one unless you live in the Chicago region, perhaps it's still available. But if I like, even if I can't find that one, I'm going to take another look at this bot, you know, any of this brand when I'm in the store. Yeah. And they've got some apparently limited releases that are in the 100 plus range that are ultra age type stuff and mm. ultra age barrels of Armagnac. Calvados and things like that. I think at the end of the day, you hit the nail on the head, Chuck. We just want to bring this and show this. This is a brand to watch. And if you see one, it's probably worth a pickup to give it a try. I, I mean, I'm not sure this is a brand to watch. This is a brand to buy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you're, you're telling me I can get this for $55? Like, this is... Nope. I'm buying a case of this and this is like my happy place every, every weekend (laughs) for like the next year. Like, thank you very much. Phenomenal. Thank you for sharing and get to Chicago, buy one of these babies. (laughs) There you go. I, we, I I don't think we can end it better than that. So yeah, I I don't know what you're editing out or how long this review is, but watch it and buy this like in the store. All right. Cheers. See you next time. Stay neat. Our bourbon.